I'm going to talk while these guys are talking because it's my podcast and that's what I'm supposed to do, kind of. I'm Justin Wilson, Hi. and I would just Justin. like to give another thought on why sure. I, or I think we all should walk I, away well, sure, from yeah. uh, the leftist, mm -hmm. democratic Good uh, idea. agenda. Okay. And mostly it's because, you know, it's a party mostly. of victimhood. It's a party hmm. of just excuses. And, really? you know, those who see themselves as eternal victims will mm. always stay that way, which is, you know, mm. Mr. Obvious statement. You know, but I used to be with that is that, you know, truly, you know, as they are claim telling black people they are victims, mm -hmm. they are actually, you know, using black people as a stepping stool to mm -hmm. um, continue with white su supremacy. You and think? it's a counterintuitive idea, but it, it is what it is. is. You but know, yeah. they, they're keeping black people low by uh -huh. having them mentally, you know, stuck in this mindset that you can't do it. The white man, there's this omniscient mm. white, you know, power out there. It's keeping yeah. you down. And, yeah. you know, it, it doesn't matter what uh -huh. it is. It could be an mm -hmm. Islamic attack, you know, explosion. Mm -hmm. Oh, it's, it's white supremacy doing huh. it. It could be, you know... Japanese could attack Pearl Harbor. Right. Oh, it's the white man. Right. You know, issue. If he didn't do this, you know, this then that wouldn't happen. You know, right. if if you know, if there's genocide in Africa. Oh, it's mm -hmm. it's the white man. Like it, everything has to do with the white man. You know, I never and, thought I was as you know, powerful just, as Democrats think I am. It, it gets to me because it's like, okay. man, is, does a white man have to be good at everything? I don't like, think I am. Come on. It, yeah. What you're telling black people that black uh -huh. people are. The, the worst at everything. They're the worst at even doing crime. <laughs> <laughs> you know, uh, like they, okay. it's, it's white people that are the best at it. it the best I don't villains. think we are. White people are the best heroes. White people are the, the best at everything. Uh -huh, I feel and you, man. It, 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 it does something to your psyche. I feel, you know, yeah. when you uh -huh. constantly see black people as the underdogs, you know. Right. Um, okay. All and right, I okay. remember I, having a, a Listen, I, I'm going to listen. I'm going to link Justin's video. Uh, cause I'm, I'm not going to go, but you can tell, you can tell why people like this guy, why I like this guy. He's just, he's talking on his phone. You know, he's, he got his phone out. He, you know, he's just a guy. He's just a real person, but I'm, I'm not going to go on forever, but you get what Justin's talking about. Now this, this is the thing I want to say about this. I mean, he's got a lot of points. I've, I've always felt like Democrats think that I'm a lot more powerful than I think I am. I mean, I, I'm to blame for everything. I mean, I'm not even white supremacist, uh, but I, I just, I don't give myself that much credit to be that evil. I, I kind of feel like, um, you know, Tyrion at his trial, you know, I, I, I wish I was the monster that you think I am. I, I, I'm not, but I, you know, that's, an, okay, maybe not as horrible as Tyrion goes, but this is my thought about this, Justin. Did you ever think that maybe it was designed that way, that it was by design. I, Justin isn't saying it wasn't by design. I just, that's my thought. That, that's what occurs to me. Did you ever think that it was intended that way? That maybe we're talking about the useless consultant to keep perpetuating his own. Okay. All right. Well, that was interesting. Uh, Let's go over here and listen to what Zach has to say. I got my channel. I want to talk a little bit today about college campuses and specifically uh -huh. the education that is going on in schools and how mm -hmm. it is brainwashing a lot hmm. of people who are going through the institutions. Okay. And no, I don't think brainwashing is too strong a word. It is a word that a lot of people commonly use okay. when it comes to topics of that. indoctrination, which is essentially being taught a lot of things without the possibility of exploring other options. So ah. it's thinking about things uh, not mm. in a critical manner and not being allowed to express different types of views to be able to really formulate a lot of different uh -huh. conclusions. Um, unfortunately, that is something that is severely lacking in a lot of college campuses, both in the private and the public institutions all across the United States. And it appears uh -huh. that it is also happening in a lot of other Western countries like Australia, the UK, mm -hmm. Spain, um, Canada. 
Uh, obviously, there are lots of examples of this, which has led to a lot of revolts and protests that happen um, mm -hmm. across college campuses. Whenever okay. a professor or a prominent spokesperson, a student comes out and says something that goes against the status quo, we definitely uh -huh. see a lot of opposition and resistance to it okay. for no good reason, you know. And I want to talk a little bit more about what my thoughts on the current uh, education system in America is like. Okay. And also, uh, for a lot of the people who are listening who are currently going to school, maybe you could get something of value out of today's videos. Because I'm just going to really ramble on and talk a little bit more okay. about my Rambling's thoughts on good. it. You know, obviously why there's a lot of uh, misinformation that is being fed to a lot of Americans. Ooh, misinformation. Today. You know what, Zach? I'm going to stop um, you right there. No, I, I okay, want to say for a fact that. that I am not against education. As good. a matter of Good. Okay. All right. I'm. Okay, I'm going to link to Zach's video. He goes on and says a lot, a lot of other great stuff. But my thoughts. Now, this, this may come as a surprise to some, to some of you. Did you ever think that it was by design? Uh, did you ever think that it was designed to be that way, Zach? Now, Zach's not saying that it isn't by design. I'm, I'm just saying that that's my thought. Did it ever occur to you, you know, whether we're talking about Zach here or we're talking about what Justin had to say, did, did anyone think, did you, do, do you think, what do you think, what do you think? Do you think it was designed that way? Quick, pause the video, go down and comment if you're watching on YouTube or if you're driving, keep driving, but I want you to take a note. What do you think? Uh, pardon my French. Uh, pardon my also French. What do you think? Was this by design? Was trying to tell black people that they're useless and only white people can do anything and that's why everything's the white people's fault and the only hope for black people is to vote Democrat. Do you think that that was just an accident or do you think it was by design? That college education brainwashes people, as Zach's going to go on to say, and I, I'm just... Zach is a riser here and... He, he talks like a young man, and when he's older, he's going to take 10 minutes to say what it would normally take him 20, I know, because I am that old man. See, I got my old man hat. So I, but I'm, watch Zach's video, like, but, but I'm warning you, if you go, if you go watch one of Zach's videos on YouTube, you're going to get addicted. I'm just warning you. So maybe you don't, maybe you shouldn't go watch Zach's video because they're so addictive. You're, you might stop playing video games. You might stop wasting your time on movies. You might want to give up drugs and alcohol. You might, you might want to become a better person because you get addicted to Zach's videos. So maybe you shouldn't go watch his video. Don't go watch Zach King's video. Don't. He's too addictive. He'll, he'll make your life better. Don't. Okay, so now that we all know that I'm not promoting Zach or Justin Wilson here. Justin, this is Justin. I'm not promoting Justin Wilson. And I'm, I'm linking them in the description so that you know specifically who I'm not promoting. Okay. Well, you've had time to think. So you tell me, was this by design? I'll answer one of my questions here, what I think. <clears throat> my father was a teacher. And I remember discussing this with him well over 10 years ago about the education system in college. And he said, oh, Jesse, you have no idea. Listen to me. I'm going to wrap this up. When people came over from Europe to visit the New World, 1500, no, 1600s. Uh, we, Pilgrims arrived in 1620, 1621. When people came over from Europe and they saw the early American colonies, they were amazed because... For the first time ever, everybody could read that had never happened before. Everybody could write that had never happened before. Two never have it happened happens before. Uh, and they could logically defend their own ideas. I mean, like Monty Python, you know, she's a witch. How do you know she's a witch? She looks like one, you know. So if she weighs the same as a duck, she's made out of wood. Like, that's actually how people reasoned. Like, that actually made sense to people. If it rhymed, people believed it was truth. Like, 
that, that, that's how the Pope was selling indulgences during Martin, Martin uh, Luther's day. Like John Tetzel was an indulgence salesman and he would rhyme and that's how he would sell indulgences. Like this is a thing. Like people didn't know how to think in the 1500s. But in the New World, in America, early American colonies, people could think on their own. They could defend an idea with somewhat sensible logic. This, this had never, ever, ever happened, ever. Okay. So, in the, the business world, in these new colonies, some guy would start a factory. If it, was, if it was a huge, enormous factory, it had nine people in it. Like That's how the economy worked. Probably one employee. Someone would start a, open a factory. They'd hire probably one or two employees. After three months, the employees would quit and open their own factories doing the same thing as competition. Well, that's kind of hard when every three months you've got a new competitor. Okay, so all the little business worms got together and they said this was never a problem in Europe. Why is this a problem here where everyone can read and write and think? Oh wait, we just answered our own question. So they nominated a man, Horace Mann, M-A-N-N, Horace Mann. You might have heard of him. To go back to Europe study and understand Europe and come back to the Americas with a solution to the problem of people being too smart and uncontrollable. So Horace Mann went to Europe, he studied Europe, he came back to America, and he had the revolutionary idea that would solve the problem forever of hiring an employee who then becomes your competition within a few months. He had the solution so this would never happen again. It was brilliant. We're going we're gonna to take a room and, and we're going to put, we're going to put a desk at one end of the room and we're going to have a big old board for writing and, and a, a big old empty wall for, for presenting stuff. And then we're going to have a bunch of desks in the other part of the room facing this. I'm going to try to follow them if you've never seen this before. So you've got a whole bunch of desks, maybe 12 to 30, maybe, you know, more or less, facing the big desk at the front and, and then the, maybe the writing board or, you know, the presentation board, the wall behind it. And we'll... we'll <laughs> we're going to convince parents that this nonsense is a good thing. And parents are going to, we'll, we'll tell them that they'll learn here. <laughs> As if they haven't been doing that already. And they can read and write and reason for the first time in, the, in human history. We're going we're gonna to convince parents that they should send their children to this and that their children should sit in those desks all day long and shut their faces. And sit and do what they're told. And we're going to hire a person to sit at the front of the room and we're going to call that person a teacher. In this room, we're going to call it a classroom. And we're going to convince people that this will help education. And that teacher is going to automatically get tired. Automatically going to try to control people as effectively as possible, beat them down, turn them into classroom slaves, and, and good obedient minions as fast as lazily as possible just in order to survive. We'll even teach them how to do it and call it classroom control. And that was his solution to uh, people uh, not being controllable. Zach. I think you're absolutely brilliant for just looking at the evidence and seeing the problem. I think, I think that's brilliant. I think it's brilliant. So, uh, you're right, Zach. It was designed that way. Justin, what do you think? Do you suppose it was designed that way? Do you suppose the Democrat KKK party wanted black people to think that white people are the only ones who could do anything? 